Let's name the different currents through our transistor, find out what's the connection between these different currents, and also see what makes a transistor a good transistor. We'll explore some specifications of a transistor. So let's look at an NPN transistor, uh, the same one that we have been working with for quite a while now. We've seen the different parts of these transistors. The heavily doped one is called the emitter, this lightly doped thin region is called the base, and the biggest region is called the collector. And we've also seen, in order to make it work as an amplifier, the connections that we do, we usually connect the emitter to the ground, then we supply a positive over here, forward biasing this junction, and as a result, let's quickly recap what happens. Be due to this forward bias, the depletion region here vanishes and the charge carriers can diffuse into each other. So the electrons over here, they diffuse into the base region. And since base region has a very tiny amount of holes, only few of them recombine with the holes over here. And as a result, only a small fraction of these electrons can turn, come out from the base terminals. And what happens to the remaining electrons? Well, because of the positive that is supplied over here, that, that positive starts pulling these electrons. You see the collector base is reverse biased because the n-type over here is connected to more positive than the p-type over here. And as a result, the remaining electrons will be swept across due to this reverse bias, and they will be collected over here, and they come out from this terminal. Of course, the electrons don't come out like this, they come out through the wire, but you get the idea. So what we'll do is we'll look at the different currents to the different parts of this transistor. Let's start with the current that we get over here. You see, because the electrons are flowing out of the base terminal, the direction of the current is in the opposite direction. So over here we would say the current would be in this direction, and we'll call that as the base current. The base current because it's coming out of the base terminal. Similarly over here, notice because of the electrons coming out from here, we get a current downwards. You see that? Electrons are going upwards, so the conventional direction of the current is downwards, so we get a current downwards, and we call that current as the collector current. This is the collector current. And now if you put some numbers, let's say about five electrons, five electrons came out from here, and let's say about 95 electrons came out from here, from, the, from this wire, then notice, as the five electrons come out over here, they push these electrons, because there's a, there's a connection over here, there's a circuit over here, and as a result, five electrons get injected into the, into the emitter from the external wire. And similarly, as 95 electrons come out over here, these 95 electrons get injected back, and as a result, total 100 electrons are getting injected at the same time. And as a result, there is a current downwards over here, and we'll call that as the emitter current emitter current. So these are the three currents that we have in a transistor. And if you look at these numbers carefully, we can even identify the connection between these three currents. So I want you to pause the video and just see if you can find out what's the connection between IC, IB, and IE. Well, one way you can see is that 100 electrons are going in, out of which 5 are going here, and 95 are going here, which means if you add these two currents, you get this current. So let's write that down. The connection between the three currents is that IE, the emitter current, will be equal to the base current, which we'll show using green, plus, plus the collector current, the collector current over here. And you can also see directly by looking at the direction of the currents, you can see that IC and IB are entering the transistor, and that total current entering the transistor should be equal to the current that's exiting the transistor, i.e. is the one that's exiting. However you want to do, this is the connection between the currents. And we can find more connections between the currents. For example, if you look over here, out of 100 electrons that got injected, about 95 electrons went through over here. And so we could say the collector current is 95% of the emitter current, right? So we can write that over here. For our example, we could say the collector current collector current IC is 95%, which means 0.95 times the emitter current. And this number is usually represented as alpha. So in more general terms, we could say IC, IC equals alpha. That number is called alpha times IE. In our example, this alpha is about 0.95. And that number is pretty much a constant for a given transistor. 
it only depends upon the doping levels of the emitter maybe it depends upon how thin the base is how few holes the how, how many holes the base has and all these design specifications is what decides the value of alpha a uh, higher the value of alpha for example if alpha is 0.99 that means 99% of electrons get through and only 1% of electrons come out over here that means the amplification is very high so higher the value of alpha better amplification you would get out of the transistor and say if alpha was I don't know, maybe 0.4. That would be a horrible transistor because that would mean only 40% get through and about 60% comes out. That's pathetic. You wouldn't buy a transistor which has, which has alpha value of 0.4. So alpha value is ideally very, very close to one, very close, like 0.99 or 0.999 or something like that. All right, another connection that we would like to do is between the collector current and the base current. And the reason for that, the collector current is usually the output because that's the amplified current, let me call that. So this is usually the output. Let me use the same color. So this is usually the output in any application. And this base current is usually the input. This is usually the input. So we'd also like to have a connection between these two. And we can see that connection again from these numbers. You see in our example, we could see that IC is equal to, well, how many times more compared to IB? Well, IC is 95, IB is 5, so 95 divided by 5 is 19. So we see that IC is 19 times more than IB because 19 times 5 is 95, right? So we could say IC is, let's use this color, 19 times more than IB, more than IB. And in general, this number is called beta. So usually you would see people writing it as IC equals beta beta times IB. And if you look carefully, if you know what alpha is, you can calculate beta, right? Because if you know alpha, then you get this, how much fraction go through, and as a result, you can calculate how much fraction comes out over here, and you can calculate what beta is. So strictly speaking, you only need to know one of these numbers, and you can calculate the other. And this beta is often called current gain. It's called gain because it's literally telling us how much is the output current gaining compared to the input. In our example, it is 19, but in a practical transistor, that number can go up to 200 or 300. And one last thing we'll do is find the connection between this alpha and beta, because we've seen that if you know one, we can find the other. So before I do that, I really encourage you to pause this video and see if you can do it yourself. All right, there are a couple of ways in which you can do that. One way maybe you can just substitute these equations somehow into this equation and do that. But I like to do it more intuitively than that. So I like to think, think of it this way. Let's say about one million electrons, one million get injected from emitter to base. Uh, or you can think of it as one billion, whatever you want. So let's take some large number. So let's say about one million. I'm just gonna write the one over here. Then we know that only alpha fraction of it get through. That means alpha million will get through over here. Makes sense, right? If alpha is 0.95, only 0.95 million will get through. And the remaining will be collected over here. How much is that remaining one? Well, out of one, if alpha goes through, remaining would be one minus alpha. One minus alpha will come out from here. And so from this, we can find what beta is. Beta, which is the current gain, is the ratio of the collector current and the base current. Can you see that? So it is the collector current, in our case is the alpha, divided by the base current. That's going to be one minus alpha. And there we have it. That's the connection between beta and alpha. And I don't remember this equation. Whenever I need this, I will always derive it this way in my head. And of course, you can also rearrange this equation and get alpha is equal to something in terms of beta. I leave that to you. So to quickly summarize, alpha and beta are two numbers that tell us how good or bad our transistors are. And they're not two independent numbers. If you know one, if you fix one, the other one also gets fixed. For a good transistor, alpha value is very, very close to one, like 0.95 or 0.99 or something. And beta value is much larger than one. Could be something like 200 or 300 or 500. And their value largely depends on the width and the doping concentration of this base region.